Before we get started, I just need 30 seconds of your time to talk to you about OneFootball. OneFootball is an app that covers hundreds of leagues, both domestically and internationally, in incomparable detail. For live stats, scores, news, updates and more, OneFootball is the only app you need to follow football all around the world. You can even stream certain games and leagues on the app totally free. I don't accept ad campaigns unless I genuinely like what I'm talking to you about, and OneFootball I genuinely do use. And my favourite part of it is the aggregator of news about your club, so you don't have to go trawling around the internet looking for news around Twitter or Reddit or YouTube, whatever it is. You can just find it all on one feed here. Go and watch the ball bouncing off Emmy Martinez's head as many times as you like on the OneFootball app. Download the OneFootball app for free from the link in the description. OneFootball, no one gets you closer. If any of the Arsenal players are watching this video, and who knows, Ramsdale says he finds himself down YouTube rabbit holes at 3am sometimes, please turn this video off right now. Because before someone helpfully comments and says we should just take it one game at a time, I completely agree from a sporting perspective. In this video, the kind of mapping I'm doing is absolutely the wrong approach to take from a professional sports person's psychological perspective. Arteta and the players are quite rightly speaking only about the next game, the next training session, and focusing only on what's within their control, the here and now, and that's how it should be. But I'm a fan, and hopefully so are you. So, let's start dreaming. The roadmap to the title. 15 games, or maybe less, lie between Arsenal and their first Premier League title since 2004. It's in our hands, and Arsene Wenger thinks we can and will do it. And who are we to disagree with Le Professeur? Right now, Arsenal are two points clear of Man City with a game in hand. According to Canon Stats simulation model, which simulates over a thousand scenarios and plots the percentage of times a team finished in a specific position out of those a thousand runs, Arsenal are on course for the title, coming first 54.2% of the time. On Thursday morning last week, Arsenal were being written off. Things change quickly in football. I'm only going to be comparing Arsenal with Man City on this roadmap to the title. I actually, perhaps controversially, do think United are in the title race right now, but feel they have too many flaws to keep it up consistently till the end of the season. If Rashford, who I was clowned for wanting in the summer by the way, can't keep up this incredible scoring rate, I can't see them sticking it out. But they're on their way and will be there or thereabouts in the coming years. First, I want to show you these, and please don't be jealous of my incredible Excel skills. Top tier. These show Arsenal and Man City's results and remaining fixtures side by side. Green for a win, grey for a draw, red for a loss, and the fixture dates for the remaining games. Some interesting bits to pick out are as follows. Arsenal have 15 games left to play. Of those, six fixtures, near half, are at home against current bottom half clubs. And there's five at home against the current bottom six. There's no such thing as an easy game in the Premier League, but if you could pick fixtures, I think you'd pick those. Arsenal have played 70% most of their scheduled games against the clubs that are currently placed 2nd to 11th. Arsenal have three fixtures remaining against the traditional Big Six, City away, Liverpool away and Chelsea at home. City have six, near half, out of their remaining 14 fixtures against current top half clubs, three at home and three away. Liverpool, Arsenal, Newcastle and Chelsea are all yet to visit the Etihad, and City face some very tricky away days. If I asked you, outside of the traditional big six, where you least want to go away to in the Premier League this season, what would your answers be? My answers, Craven Cottage, the Amex, Goodison, Selhurst Park and the Brentford Stadium, wherever it's called. Arsenal only need to visit Craven Cottage. City are yet to visit a single one of those grounds. Let's go through game week to game week, all subject to change, date and time-wise, of course, to see how things shape up. The rest of February. This weekend, Arsenal take on Leicester away, and City are away to Bournemouth, having also played midweek away in Germany against Erbe Leipzig on Wednesday night. City then have another extra fixture on the 20th of February against Bristol in the Cup, which Arsenal are out of, so we play our game in hand against Everton the night after, on March the 1st. In March, City are at home against Newcastle, away at Palace, and at home to West Ham with their second leg match against Leipzig on the 14th. Arsenal play Bournemouth, Fulham and Palace, and return to Europa League action too, with our opponents decided this Friday, playing two games before the break for the Euros qualifiers, which I think more City players are involved in than Arsenal players, because Ghana don't play, Brazil only have one friendly, etc etc. At the moment, Arsenal have two more fixtures in the City in March, but that doesn't count the FA Cup, which City may have to contend with as well. Then comes April the penultimate month. City will have gruelling Champions League quarterfinals to deal with should they progress, and Arsenal would have European fixtures too, but you feel there's far more pressure on City in the Champions League than on us in the Europa League. Both clubs have six games in the league in April, making it eight overall with the UCL and Europa League, and possibly more for City if the FA Cup progresses, but you'd imagine there'd be movement on the fixture dates if so. City play Liverpool, Southampton, Leicester, Brighton, 
Us and Fulham. Arsenal play Leeds, Liverpool, West Ham, Southampton, City and Chelsea. Finally, May. Champions League, FA Cup and Europa to one side. Both clubs have a sprint finish of four league matches. Arsenal are away to Newcastle on the 6th of May, before Brighton at home, Forest away and Wolves at home on the final day. City are facing Leeds, Everton, Chelsea and Brentford. Those final four fixtures are encouraging from our perspective, in my opinion. It's unlikely Brighton, Forest or Wolves will be playing for much by then, but Leeds, Everton and Chelsea are all likely to be playing for their lives or top four. But I have to say, Newcastle away in May with loads on the line could be pretty triggering if we get it all wrong. On balance, from here, I think we have the favourable run in. The run of fixtures that will keep me up at night is the end of April, beginning of May, when we play City away, Chelsea at home and Newcastle away. But hopefully we can afford a slip up by that point, as our next nine fixtures up to that point look like a period where we can pick up a lot of points, barring Liverpool. Although... From City's perspective, I think a lot will depend on how they get on in the cup competitions. They don't have any particularly tricky patches, but they have a lot of football to be played and play a lot of energy-sapping, relegation-fighting teams. For a team in desperate need of a Champions League, you just hope their focus might slip. I hope Wednesday the 26th of April will not be important, but I imagine it will be. If Arsenal are perfect till then and City lose a few, it is possible we win the Premier League at the Etihad. And to be honest, it would be nice to complete the set. We've won it everywhere else. You can play your own games of how many points we'll need to win the title. That's too conjecture filled even for this video. But put it this way, I don't think we need to be perfect. Win the winnable games and accept that we'll drop a few points along the way because City definitely will. This is not the same team as a few years ago. So what's stopping us and what can help us? Gabriel Jesus and Emil Smith Rowe on number nine and 10 haven't played in months and both will be back soon. That is hugely exciting. Both offer a huge amount of dynamism in terms of their positional versatility, and both bring a huge amount of pace and zest to Arsenal's attack, which has been missing at times. Having them both back for the balance of the season is going to be critical and will provide a big boost. City only have stones to return. Turning the Brentfords and Evertons into wins and draws might come from the squad. And, you know, remembering to draw the offside lines. For example, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. What's also exciting is that while he's definitely a different style of six, Jorginho has shown himself more than capable of filling in for Thomas Partey and losing him has definitely derailed our seasons before as we haven't had an adequate replacement. If you'd like some in-depth analysis on his game at Villa and his game against City, check out the bonus content to this video on the Different Knock channel membership by clicking join or on Patreon. The links for all that are in the description or you can click join on the channel. The only thing I can see stopping us is ourselves. The mental side of the game is slightly over-indexed, I feel, because often people can't pinpoint exactly what's happening tactically, and it is an easy target and an easy thing to talk about. But tactically, Arteta is special, as I've spoken about many times on this channel. You don't get these stats against City without knowing what you're doing, whether you win the game or not. We're just still so young. There's a hunger and a desire in this team, and I hope Trossard and Jorginho provide that level of cool to just see us over the line that we've needed, but I can imagine our principles going out of the window at times when the pressure is on late in the season as young players and Zinchenko try to win it on their own. I hope that doesn't happen. But the idea that this is the one season that Arsenal can win it, to me, is ridiculous. I know I said earlier you shouldn't disagree with Arsene Wenger, but I'm going to, because he's one of those saying it. Every single season, pundits say, oh, next year will be harder, X team or Y team will be back, so it's this team's only chance, never counting for the fact that someone or some club will have an off-season every single season. Look at our age profile. This isn't and won't be Arsenal's only chance at the title. So if inexperience costs us, so be it. I'm willing to wait and to see what holes can be fixed in the summer. This is a special team and a special coach. Whatever happens, we've done incredibly well this season and we're just getting started. Thank you so much for watching The Different Knock. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please consider supporting us on Patreon monthly or head to buymeacoffee.com for one-time support. You can find me at AM on Football on Twitter and we're at Diffknock on all social media. Also, check out our podcast. All the links are in the video description. Thanks.